thank you for, uh, for giving me a call on this debate. And I think it is, uh, it is a part of the, uh, or, or the clauses are particularly important um, because what we are doing here is effectively confirming the continuation of our taxation system as well as making what are, are a series of, of both minor and major uh, adjustments to it. And, and I would like to um, differentiate myself somewhat from the comments made by my uh, colleague, uh, Dr Clark. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not going to... I'm not, I'm not going to say that the Honourable Minister Todd McClay should apologise on his own behalf, on his own behalf, for the cock-ups that occurred in the five years that Peter Dunn was running the revenue portfolio and failed to do his job in the development of an appropriate computer system. And, and, if, one is, and if one is absolutely fair, then it might be that the last year or two of the Labour government, when Peter Dunn was failing to do his job properly then, there might be some criticism that could have occurred. But what we do know is, from the briefings to the incoming government uh, in 2008, in 2011, the briefing that the Minister received in the middle of 2013, and the update uh, that uh, occurred uh, at the end of last year, the National Party-led government the John Key government has known that they have not had a fit-for-purpose information technology system in the Inland Revenue Department. And, and it, I mean, it's not often that I'm generous to National Party members, but I think we all know that there is within the National Party one person who can get his head around these issues, and going right back to the INSIS project, the Honourable Morris Williamson was repeatedly on the record, was repeatedly on the record for warning the Bolger government, warning the Bolger government when he was a minister in that government, that the approach that the police were taking in that particular case would not work. And I, and I think, I mean, it's probably not fashionable these days with open source and all of the new things that I don't really understand that Claire Curran, I'm sure, will explain to me afterwards. But in those days, what he said is if Microsoft can't do it, then it's pretty unlikely that the New Zealand police will be able to develop the system. You know? And, and, and that was the case here. The problem... Well, the point, that I'm, the point that I'm getting to is that in this legislation, Mr Chairman, we are deferring the implementation of a child support system that can only be fairer than the current one. And, and my challenge is, is there a single member of the parliament, at least one who is a, you know, has a constituency, and I think most... Uh, members who are here, other than Mr Goldsmith, who deliberately loses. You know, he, he's, a, he's a deliberate loser, Mr Goldsmith, when it comes to constituency matters. Most of the members currently in the Parliament uh, do, in fact, have people coming to see them who want to discuss taxation issues, and most of us, at least every month, get someone who comes and tells us about the anomalies and the unfairness in the child support system. And I don't, in fact, I see no one, I see no one in the parliament who is prepared to defend as fair the current support, current child support system. And so, for a number of years, at least five, probably seven, it's been, it was Peter Dunn's job to work on developing a computer system that inter alia would handle those changes. And what has he done? He has spent, he spent $50 million. He spent $50 million mainly on overseas consultants, something which is, I find, particularly suspicious, Mr Chairman, 
Something that I, Mr. Chairman. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Mr. Chairman, I find it particularly suspicious that such a large amount of money has been spent on overseas consultants, money that has gone offshore, money which ignores the New Zealand IT industry. Now, did, did they even go and talk to Jade? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. There are people in New Zealand, not if you're going to spend, I don't know, what is it, $700 million on the, on the change? If you're lucky. $700 million is the current and rising. Is it? Up to what? So between 700 million and 1.5 billion dollars on upgrading the IRD system, and and what all of us know is that the appropriate way of doing that is to do a bit of a base system and to do the rest of it in chunks, and to do the rest, you know, and to break it down and to invite New Zealand firms to bid for it. Keep the money in New Zealand. And, and Mr Chairman, uh, is, is anyone surprised when you spend $50 million on overseas consultants that they recommend an overseas solution? Well, well you know, I, I, I'm relatively certain that most of these consultants get matching finance, don't they? They get matching finance from the people whose systems that they are effectively paid to supply. Mr Chairman, that is an outrage. But unlike Dr. Clark, I'm not ungenerous. I think, I think the, the minister who is currently in the chair, who is the minister responsible, should apologise on behalf of the key government. But I, I'm not yet assigning him personal responsibility for seven years of failure on the part of Peter Dunn to do a good job uh, and to convince people. I will blame John Key because John Key could have put Morris Williamson in charge of the project. He could have got some expertise. He could have got some someone who has a professional, uh, we're not in question time, so I am allowed to refer now to his professional background in the IT area and understands how these things work, but not now. The next point that I'd like to make is, Mr Chairman, I don't think I have ever seen a commencement clause that is as ugly as clause two of this bill. This commencement clause um, refers to, first of all, and it's outrageous, section 114 comes into force on the 24th of October. Not the 24th of October 2014, but the 24th of October 2001. 2001. What, what, it is retrospective taxation of the worst possible form. And, and is that a loan? No, no. Section 116B, the responsibility of Paul Goldsmith as the chair of the committee, comes in on April Fool's Day of 2005. Well, we, I mean, I thought taxation was meant to be prospective. I thought we were meant to have clarity going forward. Are we now taxing people for income or not allowing deductions from the periods starting 2001 and 2005? Well, if, 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 it, is, if it is true, it is absolutely outrageous. That, you know, there's a, a few further minor sins uh, sections 14, 16, 29, 1, 2, 3, 5 and 9, 31, 57 B, 51, 1 A, 59, 1 A and 3, 65, 99, 99 B, 102, 2, 103, 4, 13, 39 and 52, 112, 112 C and 117 B, A all come into force on April Fool's Day 2008. Well, I, I can't tell you again from memory, but what I, can, what I can tell the House is that this bill is titled the Taxation Annual Rates, uh, Foreign Superannuation and Remedial Matters Act 2013. So this is legislation at its very worst was meant to come into effect last year, and what we've got is legislation which is even, even uh, further 
uh, out, outdated. Uh, uh, David Bennett. I move that the question be now put. I'm going to hear Trevor Mallard, Honourable Trevor Mallard. Thank, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the what the, the the next point that I would like to make, and I and I'm going to refrain uh, from reading them because I think it would go, uh, people would go cross-eyed. But there are ten full lines of numbers starting at section six and finishing at 117 and 117 BB, which come into force on the 1st of April 2014. So what we, what we do have is quite a large section where it is uh, prospective, but again, I want to say, well, the poor old Paul Goldsmith, he's not allowed to talk in the debate, but he's sitting there shaking his hate head like a little boy in the premise. Uh, Mr. He's shaking his head like a, like a little boy saying, no, 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 no. If I am wrong, and if those sections don't come into effect then, come into force then, then he should take a call and tell me when I'm wrong. Because I am one of the relatively simple members of parliament who reads the bill and takes ministers at their word. You know, it's an old, I know it's an old fashioned, it's an old fashioned approach, but when a, when a bill says that it's a government bill, when it is in the name of a minister, in this case, the Honourable Todd McClay, and it says it comes into effect, or a few sections thereof come into effect on the 1st of April 2014, I believe him. And, and if Paul Goldsmith is doubting Todd McClay's word, I mean, we all, we've all heard Paul Goldsmith say that he should have had the job and not Todd <laughs> McClay. You know, that's not a, you know, that's, there's, no, there's no secret of Paul Goldsmith's uh, opinion of their relative abilities. I'm on, I'm on Todd Mc, Minister, I'm on your side. Minister, I'm on your side, not Paul Goldsmith's side. And in fact, in fact, if we got it right, Paul Goldsmith would be in the ACT Party and John Banks would be in the National Party because that, you know, that better fits the economic views uh, of, the, of the relative individuals and, and given the... Um, would probably actually make things better uh, around corruption and other issues, which, uh, which of course, I won't uh, refer to with regard to on the Honourable John Banks uh, no. at, at the moment. Uh, Mr Speaker, Mr Chairman, the, the bit that I think my colleague David Clark uh, has focused on the most uh, as to the timing, uh, uh, sections 37BA, uh, 52D uh, and 55B. And, and those are the matters, uh, I understand, that have to do with child support. And, and that is, those are the ones that come in to play in, on the 1st of April 2016. And the question I would like to ask the Minister is whether any consideration is being given to families who have um, looked at the changes, watched what the government promised, watched what went into the select committee, made submissions, took them at their word and made financial arrangements on the basis of the undertakings given by Peter Dunn and John Key and Bill English. And, 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 and what, we, I'm, what we sh I'm sure all of us will have uh, constituents or people who have approached us in our offices who, and, and I don't know anyone who will be totally satisfied with this legislation because it's, it's a very matter of child support. Um, no one is ever totally happy with it. It's, you know, it's either too much or not enough depending on whether you're paying or getting it. Um, there, is un, you know, there is perceived unfairness around whose income counts uh, and, and which family's in, income counts. There's always uh, questions about the timing um, of, the, uh, of the income. But what happens when government promises change is that people rely on their word. People enter into financial arrangements, they buy businesses, they buy houses, they take out mortgages, they arrange for their kids, they sometimes um, do schooling arrangements, uh, they enter into debt and they do it on the basis 
of an undertaking from government. And my question to the Minister, and I am looking forward, I am looking forward to the Minister taking a call in this debate, uh, is whether he is prepared to make those changes. Jamie Lee Ross. I move that the question be The now question put. is that the question be now put. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. A party vote will be. I'll ask the clerk for a party vote. Thank you. you ask one, I'll ask the clerk. No, no, no. New Zealand, New Zealand National. 59 in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 votes opposed. New Zealand First. 7 votes opposed. Māori Party. 3 in favour. Mana. One opposed. Act New Zealand. One in favour. United Future. One in favour. Brendan Horan. Members, the ayes are 64, the noes are 56. The question will be put. Uh, the question is at part one, stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. A point of order, Honourable Trevor Matt. I think you might mean clause one. Yeah, clause one, I said. I th think you said part one, but we'll. Well, my apologies if I did, but I have clause one in front of me. So clause one, stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. Yes, to the contrary, no. The ayes have it. We now move to uh, clause two, but first we have the Minister's amendments as set out on SOP number 413. The question is that the Minister's amendments be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that clause two is amended stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. I will report this bill with amendment presently. Members, we now move to the, uh, to the debate on the student loan scheme, amendment bill number three. And we, um, part one, and this is debate.